Hi, I'm Sam Dale, a Senior Technology Analyst at IT TechX and the author of our latest report, Optics for Virtual Augmented and Mixed Reality 2024-2034. This report characterises the optical requirements of XR devices and describes the evolution expected from these markets. It, it splits them into virtual and augmented reality headsets based on whether they are optically see-through in the case of augmented reality or optically closed off in the real world in the case of virtual reality. Virtual reality headsets use a lens system to magnify and focus their displays to a comfortable distance from the eye versus AR headsets use a slightly more involved setup where we have an optical combiner which overlays virtual information on top of real information coming in from the real world and in some cases ancillary lenses to, for example, correct for eyewear prescriptions or to focus the virtual information to a comfortable accommodation distance. And these three areas of technology are the main focus of this report, with, lens, with lenses for VR and optical combiners in particular being the key areas of discussion. In terms of motivation for the importance of XR optics, headset design is clearly a function of optical architecture, Immersion optical technologies enable more compact and obtrusive and socially acceptable devices. For example, in AR headsets, moving towards more efficient optics, which require less nits in for lumens out, can shrink the battery size of a headset and reduce thermal management concerns from lead to use less bright displays. In, in VR headsets, a move towards more compact optical designs like pancake lenses allows these headsets to appeal to new consumers and enhances experiences of video pass-through mixed reality. Image quality is the number one factor in XR immersion and clearly optics which sit between the display systems and the eyes are incredibly important here. Emerging optical technologies improve the utility of XR devices. For example, these more efficient optical technologies in AR could increase brightness for outdoor use. Better compensation for eyewear prescriptions could be introduced. And particularly in VR, solutions to vergence accommodation conflict. So that's a mismatch between the perceived distance and focal distance of virtual content are being sought actively today. For AR headsets in particular, unsatisfactory optical performance has been a key factor keeping these devices from a mass market. But in general, improvements to XR, market, uh, XR optics have the ability to enable more use cases and draw in more users. A wide range of AR optical combiner technologies are outlined in this report. There are two overarching categories here, the first being waveguide combiners, in which light is coupled through a transparent substrate usually glass, but increasingly plastic by total internal reflection. And the key advantage here is that these could be made to look surprisingly similar to standard eyeglasses lenses, allowing design choices to be made that promote social acceptability in the design of AR headsets. On the other hand, non-waveguide combiners don't use this coupling for a transparent substrate, but some of the, some sub-technologies here, particularly those based on free space holographic optical element combiners, and in some cases, freeform mirrors can be made to look surprisingly similar to spectacle lenses as well. Birdbath combiners are also a particularly important technology in this category, finding use in many low cost headsets. And a substantial amount of discussion report is dedicated to the choice between waveguide and non waveguide combiners and the potential winning technologies here. In terms of the VR market, a, a generational shift in lens choices is underway in 2023, with a shift from the Fresnel lenses, which were used in most early earlier VR headsets, to the use of polarization-based pancake lenses. So these are catadioptric lenses, which use both ref reflective and refractive optics to shrink the optical path and make headsets more compact, opening up the appeal of VR to more consumers and helping to keep things a little bit less unwieldy. From around 2027 on, we'd expect to see a shift towards a third generation of lenses, which are expected to be focus tunable. So these would be expensive and somewhat compact, but the key advantage here is that when paired with eye tracking technology, these could be used to correct for vergence accommodation conflicts, improving the interaction with VR devices and, and also the comfort, which is particularly essential if use cases like VR workstations are desired to be a serious consideration in the coming years. 
so these are just a few brief insights from the report. We have a webinar coming out very soon, which will give you more in-depth insight as well as, of course, the report itself. But in terms of some highlights, it provides 10-year forecasts for 13 individual optics technologies, as well as high-level material demands relating to these markets. It provides benchmarking on a wide range of technological and commercial factors for these technologies, as well as a discussion of further, more niche technologies. It provides wide assessment of technological and player trends for the XR optics market, as well as the XR market in general. And over 30 company profiles, many from first-hand interviews are provided, as well as updates from recent events, including AWE, CES and SID Display Week. And overall, charts the course in which extended reality optics industry is expected to reach 5.1 billion US dollars in value by 2034.